Thank you for being part of the Oakwood Free Will Baptist Church Ministries. Our prayer is that those who listen to the Word of God will find a greater revelation of God's purpose in their lives. For additional resources, please visit us on the web at www.oakwoodfwb.com. Today, may you be encouraged, strengthened, and refreshed by our message. Amen. All right, if you have your Bibles this morning, turn to the book of Romans. Romans chapter 11. We're going to look at, um, of course, last week we talked about God's mercy. And uh, so this week we're going to look at the flip side of that, uh, which is God's grace. Uh, one of the attributes of God is he is a gracious God. And so we're going to look at that this morning. Romans chapter 11, and we're going to look at one verse. Well, actually, there will be multiple verses as we go through the lesson. But this particular verse, Romans chapter 11 and verse 6. And if by grace, then is it no more of works. Otherwise, grace is no more grace. But if it be of works, then it is no more grace. Otherwise, work is no more work. Now, I want to explain this to you because it's talking about salvation. Okay? And if your salvation is based on your works, then grace doesn't come into the picture. If your salvation is based on grace, then works does not come into the picture. And that, that's basically what it's saying. In other words, salvation, we know the Bible tells us in Ephesians chapter 2, verses 8 and 9, that salvation is by grace through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. And you see, there are some people, particularly even nowadays, but even back then, that we're trying to say, okay, it's grace plus works that get me to Jesus. And what we're reading in the Bible is that, no, it's not by works. It's all by grace. It is all by God's unmerited favor. That's what grace is talking about. It is that unmerited favor of God. Wednesday night uh, in the message, I mentioned that there was an article that was written. And in the article... Uh, it basically said that um, that the, you know that that God's salvation is uh, what's the word I used is um, there's no condition is basically what the article said, and I thought to myself, okay, that isn't true because there is a condition to God's salvation. There is not a condition to God's love. God loves everybody. I mean, he loved everybody. He wanted everybody to be saved. Therefore, he sent Jesus. We know that he loves us because Christ came, became a man, died for us on the cross, rose again the third day. We know that God's love is unconditional. But God's salvation is conditional. You have to trust Christ. That's the condition of salvation. But it's for everybody. It's not limited to a certain number of people. God's love is all-inclusive, and so is God's salvation based on our trusting in Christ. So there is a condition to salvation. There's not a condition to God's love for you, but there is a condition to God's salvation, and that condition is Christ. Uh, yes? I just want to clear my mind. So basically, salvation is given through God's grace, not by the things that you do. In the world. That is correct. You should still do the right thing. Yes. But that doesn't guarantee you're going to get salvation. Here, here's the thing about works and, and grace, all right? You are saved by your faith. What happens as a result of your faith is the works. You see what I'm saying? In other words, they don't come beforehand. You don't work yourself to that point where all of a sudden, oh, I'm a Christian. What happens is you trust in God's grace through Christ Jesus. And then what he produces in you afterward are these good works. Does that make sense? Okay. All right. Uh, I need to be more specific. If I ever say something and you're not clear about it, please ask me because I will go into more explanation. Well, I have no problem asking questions. That's fine. And, and the thing is, you know, I take it for granted. Certain things because I have grown up in church. I've grown up around the Word of God all my life. And sometimes I talk and I don't think, hey, I need to explain that a little more. You know what I mean? So if, if, if I ever don't explain it sufficiently, 
definitely ask me again because I will be more than happy to try to explain it a little further. Um, yeah, Ephesians 2, 2, 8, 9, 10. Yeah. For by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. And it's referring to salvation. Okay, it's referring to the fact that we trust Christ first, and then he produces in us what the Bible refers to in verse 10, the fruit of the Spirit, which is love, joy, peace. Yes. So, yeah, that's it. Okay. All right, so when we think about God's grace today, God's grace is displayed in both a general and a specific sense. It's displayed toward all men in general. This is sometimes referred to as common grace. That is, but it's also expla explained or ex uh, given to toward believers in a particular special grace. That is, in God's common grace, number one, He is the creator and sustainer of life. The very breath that we breathe is a result of God's grace because he allows us to live another day, all right? So in a general sense, in a common, this is a common grace in that he creates and sustains all of life. Um, he himself gives to all people life and breath. That's in Isaiah chapter 42 and verse 5. Uh, he acts kindly toward all of his creatures. As a matter of fact, the Bible even talks about that not one sparrow falls to the ground that God doesn't take notice. So, you know, whether it is humankind or whether it is God's creatures, you know, God's grace is displayed uh, to all. And so uh, the Lord is good to all and his mercies are over all of his works. Matthew chapter 5, verse 45. Uh, there are a lot of verses that talks about not only does God uh, give us grace in that, that he sustains life, God, he gives us grace every day in the fact that he supplies our needs. He continues to extend his grace. Um, there, there are times when we struggle, uh, even as a believer, we struggle and yet we see God's grace extended to us during those difficult times. As a matter of fact, uh, the Apostle Paul had what was called, the Bible called it a thorn in the flesh. He had a physical infirmity. Um, we don't really know exactly what that was. Some people say, uh, commentators will tell you that it was his eyesight, that he had these eyes that ran all the time and that it was really bothersome to him. And, you know, in order for him to be able to further his ministry better, that he prayed for God to take that infirmity away from him and God didn't. And the Bible even said that Paul prayed three different times. Well, I don't think he just prayed three times. I think he prayed multiple times, but it said that he prayed at least three times that God would remove that. And then God told him, Paul, my grace is sufficient for thee because my strength is made perfect in your weakness. So, uh, and then Paul said, therefore I will gladly glory in my infirmity that the power of Christ may rest upon me. So, but God's grace, even in those difficult days, whether you suffer a eye problem or a back problem or, you know, joint problems, whatever physical infirmities that you have, God's grace is sufficient to take you through those difficult times. And so, um, but that is God's grace. Uh, God's grace um, will, um, will give us salvation. Just as God graciously gives physical life, He graciously gives spiritual life. But God, being rich in mercy because of His great love wherein He loved us, even when we were dead in our transgression, made us alive together in Christ, uh, by grace are you saved, uh, and raised us up with him and seated us with him in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Notice he's specific when he says he's raised us up into heavenly places in Christ Jesus. What he's saying is it's not what you do to get you there. It's not what you do to, to get salvation. It's what Christ did for you. The fact that you're trusting in Jesus. So it, it's a specific thing that he is... Uh, set us up with him in heavenly places in Christ Jesus so that in the age to come he might show us the surpassing riches of his grace in kindness toward us in Christ Jesus. For by grace have you been saved through faith and that not of yourselves is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. Ephesians 2 verses 4 through 10. Uh, those are the verses, verses 8 through 10 that Tina was talking about. So God gives us grace in that he gives us salvation 
but he also gives us grace in the fact that there is a thing called sanctification. Not only um, is salvation all of grace, but so is sanctification. Just as God graciously sustains physical life, he graciously gives us spiritual life, um, the ability and desire to do right after one is saved is a gift of God. It is a gift of his grace. You know, you take a person that did not know Jesus, and all of a sudden, the Bible says that they are now a new creation in Christ. Old things are passed away, all things are become new. He is every day, because of his grace, is helping us grow spiritually. It's all because of his grace. If we ever get to the point where we're not growing spiritually, then there's something wrong. Because there is a deficiency in our lives spiritually somewhere if we're not continuing to see growth as a Christian. You know, when a, a child is born, and we're going to do a baby dedication, uh, a portion of our service today will be a baby dedication. And we've actually got two children, Mason and Jace, are going to be dedicated. Now, child dedication is not child baptism or anything like that. We don't believe in that. But what we do believe is that as moms and dads, God blesses them with children, then as a parent, we in turn need to dedicate our child back to God. Uh, and so that's what it's all about. It's just basically for the parent saying, you know what, God, you blessed us with this child. And so we want this child to follow you and to love you and live for you. And so we make a commitment that we're going to raise this child to know who Jesus is. That's basically what a child dedication is. And so we're going to do that today. Um, and so, um, but you take a little baby like Jace was just born a few weeks ago. You know, if Jace did not grow physically, you think, man, something's wrong. I mean, if you don't start seeing him getting taller and gaining more weight, you know, and beginning to go from drinking milk eventually to eating meat and or what, you know, vegetables, solid foods, then you would think, man, something's wrong with that baby. Well, in the same sense, as a child of God, if you see someone who has trusted Christ here and they're still here, they haven't grown in their faith, then something's wrong. I mean, something is spiritually wrong. And so it's important through God's grace, he helps us to grow. And you know what? God teaches us, uh, Abe, even in these difficult times, like with your child. I mean, we learn things even in those difficult times. So we pray for God's grace that it will be sufficient for us because we definitely want to keep learning and keep growing, but we definitely need God's grace in those, those times. There you go. Yes, sir. Um, and also, God gives us grace as we serve Him. I'm going to tell you, folks, it is hard sometimes to minister to people. And by the way, did you know that it's not just my job to minister? It's your job to minister. As a matter of fact, my job, according to what the Bible tells us, is that I am supposed to equip, help equip you for ministry. <laughs> See what I'm saying? So, And that's what the Bible tells us, that... We are to equip people for the work of the ministry. So even though God's called me to be a pastor, God's called all of us to be involved in ministry. And so we need God's grace because whether you're ministering to your child or you're ministering to your, your co-worker, you know, you're trying to extend the grace of God to them, it takes God's grace sometimes as you deal with people um, that are very difficult sometimes to deal with. So it takes the grace of God in your life to to help you to, to minister with patience, if you will. But also, God's grace is there in times of suffering. I already mentioned this a little bit. But according to Paul, suffering for the cause of Christ is a privilege. Paul said, man, Lord, if, if your will is for me to keep this infirmity and this, this thing in the flesh that I deal with, man, if it's going to bring the power of Christ more upon me, let, let it come. You just let me have it. Bring it on. I remember years ago, and I say years ago, I was probably six or seven years old when my pastor at my home church in Birmingham, his wife, Miss Billy, came down with cancer. And um, I can't remember what type of cancer it was, but I remember all of my childhood. The cancer would be there and then it would be gone, and then it would come back, and it would go away, and it would come back again. And Miss Billy, she suffered, I know, for probably 25 years 
with this certain type of cancer. But you know, there's one thing that I never saw her do. Never. I never saw her without a smile on her face. By the way, she played the piano for our church too. Wonderful piano player. I would see her over there sometimes, and you could tell that she was hurting physically, but she still had a smile on her face as she played the piano for the glory of the Lord. And she told me one time, because I asked her, I said, Miss Billy, how, how do you go through what you go through and still have a smile on your face? Because I know you're in pain. And she smiled and looked me in the eye, and she said, Brother Dwayne, or she said, Dwayne, she said, it is the grace of God that helps me that joy that I have because of Christ, it it it's something that cannot help but come out. You know, the joy that you have in Christ and that grace that He gives you to help you through those difficult times. Um, it is true. You know, people can talk about the grace of God and can say, "Man, God's grace is sufficient. His grace is sufficient." But you have no idea until you're there. But when you face those difficult times, man, you can testify to the fact, yeah, it is. Because without Christ and without His grace, I wouldn't make it through what I'm going through. So uh, His grace is, is with us even through, through times of suffering, uh, through times of trial. And so, by the way, the, um, the verse that I mentioned to you about, about Paul and the thorn in the flesh is found in uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 12 verses 7 through 9, where it says, My grace is sufficient for thee. And so uh, if you wanted to write that down or look that up sometime. Uh, now, because God is a gracious God, what does that mean to us? Number one, because God is gracious, we also should be gracious. Um, believers are expected to emulate God's attribute, attribute of goodness and graciousness, uh, remembering how God has been gracious to us his enemies, that's, a, that's what we were, uh, we should also be gracious to everyone. And by the way, I told you before, I don't have an enemy. I really don't. I, I can't think of anybody that I would say would be my enemy. I'm talking about here, in the here and now. I love everyone and want everyone to be saved. But if I did have an enemy, then there needs to be a certain amount of grace extended to them um, because God has been gracious to us. And number two, because God is gracious, it should cause us to be humble. When we recognize that the very God of heaven would extend his grace to us, that ought to humble us and, and make us realize um, that there is nothing that we have done or are doing or ever will do to earn God's grace. He has given that to us freely. Um, what you do have that you did not receive, and if you did not receive it, or I'm sorry, if you did receive it, why do you boast as if you had not received it? Uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 7. In other words, we have nothing and we are nothing except for Christ. I mean, we have everything we have. We are everything we are because of Him. And so that's what the verse is talking about. Because God is gracious, because God has extended our, His grace to us, we ought to be grateful to Him. That's the third thing. We ought to be grateful that God would love us the way that he did and would extend that grace to us. God is not obligated to show grace to, to anyone. And, and uh, that's in Exodus chapter 33, verse 19. If he was, it would no longer be grace. Romans chapter 11, verse 6. Grace and gratitude go hand in hand. Thanks be to God for his indescribable gift, the Bible says. 2 Corinthians chapter 9 verse 15. But then also, because God is gracious, we not only should be thankful, but we should lift Him up in praise. Ephesians chapter 1, verses 3 through 14, is a hymn of God's praise for God's grace and salvation. Some of our most beloved hymns um, have God's grace as their focus. For instance, Amazing Grace, we sang that Wednesday night. Was it Wednesday night we sang Amazing Grace? Yeah, I believe it was. Um, grace, tis a charming sound, only a sinner, wonderful grace of Jesus. All these songs that have been written for the glory of God talk about God's grace. I wonder, do you ever find yourself, by the way, I know that not everyone, you consider yourself uh, a good singer. Some of you think, you know, if I were to sing, it'd make the dogs howl. But you know what? 
the same the same thing that you might think would make the da- the dogs howl is something that is pleasant to God's ears. And so I wonder, do you ever find yourself driving down the road and all of a sudden you just burst out in a song or a song comes on the radio and you just can't help but sing right along with it? And the only time you would do that if you're by yourself with nobody else there because you're making a joyful noise unto the Lord. But you know what, folks? It doesn't matter whether you carry a tune in a bucket. What matters is that you are singing praises unto God. And it's not just the attitude of your heart. It's got to come outwardly, too. That's why I encourage, it doesn't matter if you sing or not. When we sing congregational songs, you join right in. And listen, when we were in North Carolina, Tina and I, you remember the lady's name that was at um, the church there? It was in Gardner, wasn't it? You remember that lady, the one that would sing sometimes, and she would sing, um, fill my cup, Lord, I lift it up, Lord. Um, she, she really, and I, I hate that this is on video because I don't want it to offend anybody, but she had a really difficult time singing because she couldn't, I don't know if she was tone deaf, but I'm going to tell you, some of the sweetest singing I've ever heard in my life was this lady getting up, singing that song, and I knew that she meant it from the bottom of her heart. And man, it was something precious. I mean, I cried most of the time I heard her sing because I knew that she had a heart that wanted to praise God. And you know what? That's what grace will do for you. Grace will make you want to just sing to praise to God, to sing to Him. It doesn't matter if you can really sing or not. You just want to sing to God because of His grace that's been extended to you. Um, but then the last, last thing I want to mention is because God is gracious, we should be motivated to serve Him more not less. We should be motivated to serve God more and not just get by. We ought to be willing to do more and more and more for the Lord. Some discourage teaching and preaching on God's grace, fearing it will squelch commitment and service. However, several passages in Scripture indicate otherwise. Consider once again Paul's words in 1 Corinthians 15, 10, but by the grace of God, I am what I am. And his grace toward me did not prove uh, vain, but I labored even more than all the others, yet not I, but the grace of God that is within me. That is, Paul was saying, you know what? Because I recognize that God's grace is in my life, man, that's motivation for me to do more, not less. You know, the Bible talks about, should we sin? This is the book of Romans. Should we sin that grace may abound? God forbid. So not because of God's grace, it's not that we want to try to get by with more and more and more because we recognize, oh, well, God's grace will be more evident in my life the more bad that I do. It's just the opposite of that. Because of God's grace, man, we want to do more for Him and we want to stay away from sin. We want to do more right. You know, we want to do more for God because of that grace, because we're grateful and we want to to give praise to Him. The Bible talks about that we are to produce, not that we are, but that God produces these good works in our life so that people may see those good works and in turn glorify our Father that's in heaven. So you see, it's kind of like a just a circle, a non-ending circle. God gives us the grace to do the things that we do so that in turn, those good works, people will see those good works and then glorify God that's in heaven. So it's just a continuous cycle. And so the important thing this morning is that we recognize the grace of God and that we make application to it in our lives. We need to recognize that His grace is sufficient no matter what we go through, no matter what trials we have. But because of that grace, man, we ought to want to do more and more and more for God, for His glory. So maybe something was said this morning that spurred something that you wanted to mention this morning. Anybody? About God's grace? Everything that I count as gain, I count as loss. What Paul said, what things that I counted as gain, or I count loss for the excellency of the knowledge of Christ Jesus, my Lord. In other words, uh, those things that <clears throat> that Paul once thought were important, they meant nothing to him anymore because he had received the grace of God in his life. So, <clears throat> good. Somebody else. Yes. Yes, he is. He is very faithful. Yeah, you know, I was talking at breakfast this morning. She just, all at once she looked at me and she said, what would you do if Christ came back today? Right now. Yeah. Right 
That's right. <laughs> we'll take off. That's right. I know. I was just reading breakfast and I was just looking at the sky and the trees outside. All of his glory. All of you. Yeah. Well, <laughs> well, if, if, oh yeah, listen, and when he comes, it's just like that. I mean, no, the first time he comes to, to receive the church up to heaven, the Bible says no eye will see him, but boom, it's going to happen that quick. Uh, the second time he comes back, every knee will bow and every tongue will confess that he is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Um, but the first time, the rapture, it's going to be quick in the twinkling of an eye. Uh, just like a thief in the night. You know what? That's right, the ultimate surprise party. Um, all of those who know Christ immediately will be with him in the clouds. And so, yeah, we'll hit warp drive coming, leaving the earth. I, th- I think about, you ever watch Star Trek where you see it all of a sudden and then it, shoom, it takes off? That's kind of the way I picture us going up to heaven. We're leaving one of those trails like a jet engine leaves behind us as we go straight up. Beat, beat me up, guys. That's right. Beat me up. <laughs> All right. Well, let's have prayer this morning. Lord, it has been good to be in your house today. Uh, thank you for my brothers and sisters in Christ. Lord, what a joy it is to worship with them and to talk about the things of God. And uh, Lord, I'm grateful for each one of them. And uh, Lord, whether they have been a Christian for a long time or just very shortly, Lord, what a joy it is to see the growth spiritually in them. And uh, Lord, I pray that you would help us all to recognize uh, that the grace of God is not only sufficient through those difficult times, but Lord, it's also available and there to us, even in the good times. And sometimes we neglect to praise you and to thank you for that grace in the good times. But Lord, I pray that you would help us to recognize the implications of your grace and the fact that we need to extend grace to others as you've extended it to us. Lord, it ought to motivate, the grace of God ought to motivate us to, to be gracious to others and to, to praise you and to be grateful for, for that gift of grace. Uh, and Lord, it ought to motivate us to do more for the cause of Christ. So I pray, God, that you would take the word of God that we've read this morning and that you would uh, empower us to be more than what we are for you. Uh, Lord, to daily challenge us uh, that we would grow closer and closer in our relationship with Christ. And Lord, we just commit ourselves to you afresh and anew this morning. We ask your blessings on us as we continue to worship. I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Amen.